our old drummer Scott just through a mutual friend and um, we started playing together and we, we were into stuff like we were into like Metallica and Ugly Kid Joe and you know Pearl Jam and all that kind of stuff we, we do covers of, of that kind of stuff so that's like the beginnings I guess yeah. I think it was 96 Pete joined in December of 96 we were in a biology class together and I met him no. And it was kind of like, you play guitar? He's like, yeah. You play? He's like, yeah. And after that, I was like, all right, let's play. I played my first show at a kid's birthday party. And uh, I didn't know any Inspection 12 songs, so I only sat in during the cover section of the, the party, um, playing No Effects and Weezer with him. And James, who's Scott's cousin, uh, we brought him in uh, to play guitar for us. He was into like... Ozzy and Motley Crue and stuff like that, so we like, we're probably rips the guitar. So let's try them out, and we tried them out, and it worked really well. After they released their second CD by themselves, Urination, I went into practice with them, just kind of to show off that I could play the stuff, and uh, just got to ask me to try out or whatever, and so, you know, just clicked, and from then on, we started doing shows. So the lineup became me, Scott, James, and Dan from that point on, and uh, that's how it was when we got signed. We were starting to just really big, you know, crowds coming to the show. It was really exciting. And then uh, we finally, you know, signed a record contract from Honest Don, which has been kind of sitting on the table for a couple months. Uh, Scott's a diabetic. Our drummer is a diabetic. He had taken a shot, but I don't think he'd eaten to measure out to uh, regulate his sugar level. When he was driving his car, he started to lose, kind of lose it. Like when your blood sugar level drops that much, he starts to get all, you know, delirious. He'd gone into diabetic comatose and didn't realize what he was doing, where he was, or anything, and just passed out at the wheel and ran into a wall. It was in a lab in the afternoon. And uh, my sister came to the door, and I was asleep. The lab partner elbowed me, and my sister looked at me and just started bawling, so I ran out of the room. And I guess I really belie I believed it at first, but I didn't understand how my life was going to change, and that was really scary. Will Towers called me, a good friend of ours. He called me and told me, the only thing he said was, um, Scott's been in a car accident, and I don't know if he's all right. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to call Dan. Pete called me and said I remember this real clearly he said he said Dan come home right now Scott got in an accident I don't know if he's okay so I called Scott's cell phone and um and it picked up and it said hello and I was like oh my god Scott jeez he just freaked me out he said you weren't okay and he goes oh hey man and I was like and then I, I realized that he had the answering machine message that was the Hello, you know, the, the fake you out thing, so two minutes later my uh, my dad called me and said uh, Scott got an accident and he died. After that point we, d we weren't quite sure, we didn't talk about it for about a, geez, probably a couple weeks as to what we were going to do as a band. I guess that week it was, it was not like a band mate had died, it was like one of my best friends had died, it was like, I mean Scott was like my little brother. Um, there was probably a time for a couple days when we all thought in the back of our heads that that was going to be it. After like the immediate family stuff, I think the first thing I thought about was the band because I didn't, I guess I couldn't like see the world without it. But we all finally came together and put our thoughts in and decided that this was, especially the fact that we had just recorded a full length album for a record label, that was Scott's last, you know, effort into anything. So we figured that that was pretty much like his life's work and that, you know, we should carry that on, you know, in honor of him. We'd have to bring on board a drummer who um, was a friend of ours, you know, who was really close to Scott and really close to us. We didn't just want it to be some guy. We started getting a lot of phone calls, uh, kind of uh, 
impersonal, inconsiderate phone calls from just random people that were like, hey, I heard you lost your drummer. Are you looking for a drummer? I play drums. First person we thought of was Tim. A few weeks later, uh, Dan called me in Gainesville and said that they were going to do a Cedar release show. So they asked me if I'd play a couple songs, and of course I said definitely. If Scott would lose his arms, you'd ask Tim to play in this spa. And uh, I just started making trips down to Gainesville about three times a week, and I would just play with Tim and just go over all the songs on the album, and he got it down like that. It was really fast, so we pretty much figured, you know, he's the one. A lot of people say, which is pretty normal, when someone dies, that the person who died would want it this way. I, I didn't believe that at first. I, I didn't, because I, I feel I feel like it's really wrong to put words in people's mouths, especially when the person's dead. You know, and, and none of us know what Scott would have wanted, or we didn't. But it's worked out so well, I think, and it's gone just so smoothly, and we've all gotten along really well, that now I think I believe that this is probably what Scott would have wanted. I'm pretty sure now. Man walks down the street and says, Why am I soft in the middle now? Why am I soft in the middle now? The rest of my life is so hard. I need a photo opportunity. I want a shot of attention. Don't want to end up in a cartoon, in a cartoon graveyard. Don't you have to don't you Run back down the alleyway with some roly poly little bad face girl. Oh, 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 Cool, hopefully.